my name is Sarah, welcome to the It is a Sarah YouTube channel. Today it is Monday, March 4, 2024 and this is episode 130. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet and I love to talk, so that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I make my episodes in Dutch and English, so be sure you pick the right one. Today I'm going to tell you about my handwerk perikele, my crafty adventures from last week. It has been a long time since I had so little craft time. I have hardly knitted or crocheted. My week was extremely busy. Even though it was hardly due to unplanned things, it took me by surprise. Somehow I hadn't really realized it would be such a week. Luckily, it were mainly nice things that filled my days, all things that made me very happy. Hard jumping things. But at the end of the week, I was so tired, but also very satisfied and with a warm heart. It was interesting that the amount of projects on my needles suddenly felt completely different. While I showed all my works in progress, all my whips last week in episode 129 and said that I enjoyed having so much on my needles, I experienced it differently after this busy week. Suddenly it felt overwhelming, too many. I didn't know where to start and nothing came out of my hands. So interesting to notice that. It made me realize that the way of crafting is not only personal, but also depends on your circumstances. While it mostly makes me happy to have a lot of different things on my needles, when I'm busy it's better to only work on one single project at a time. Yesterday I compensated my craft time a bit. The overwhelmed feeling made me have a little trouble getting back on track. However, after a few hours I felt completely comfortable again with my amount of projects. I could suddenly imagine that when you have a busy job, small children or simply have many different hobbies, it can be very nice to only work on one project at a time. It can also be extra challenging then to make a choice from all the beautiful patterns that are available. Okay, so today it will be a chatty episode from my kitchen table. No, not from my kitchen table, for me at my kitchen table. My kitchen table is not very chatty. <laughs> um, as I said, I didn't make enough progress on my works in progress to fill a whole episode uh, with. So I will keep uh, all my whips for another episode. And uh, today I will chat with you about some other things because I had a lovely insight yesterday which um, uh, has all to do with the cardigan I am wearing and I will tell you all about that in a minute. And also um, I want to use this episode to uh, share a little bit more about the crafting from my youngest girl, from my uh, 14 year old daughter. She uh, uh, has some beautiful crochet and knitting work uh, which I would love to share with you because I'm a very proud mother. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, my crafting mother heart is jumping sky high by all her beautiful work. So um, uh, I think today is the perfect moment to, uh, to show it with you. Um, okay, but let's start with what I'm wearing. Because today I'm not wearing a knitted ca a cardigan. It, uh, uh, it is knitted, but it's a store-bought uh, machine knitted cardigan. And um, uh, it's quite old. I think I own it for maybe 10 years. I don't know, for quite a long time. And it was for years and years, absolute my favorite cardigan. And I did forgot it a little bit. Um, it's not hanging uh, between my uh, hand knitted uh, items. So it was on another place and uh, it was, uh, yeah, I, it was not, um, how do you say it? I, I did forgot it. That, that, no, I did not really forgot that I owned it, that I own it, but um, it was not on my queue. Do you say it that, like that? It was not on my queue. Uh, but yesterday morning, um, I sneaked out of bed quite early. Um, it was Sunday morning and uh, during the week, my husband and I, we always uh, get out of bed together at the same time. Um, but in the weekend, he loves to stay in bed a little longer. I just want to uh, get up <laughs> very early. So he also doesn't sleep very long, but um, longer than uh, than me. 
Uh, and uh, most of the time I pick up a cardigan or a sweater the evening before in the weekend because uh, my clothes are hanging uh, at his side of the bed and I don't want to wake him. But I was, uh, I, I did forgot that Saturday evening. So um, I thought, oh, what should I wear today? And downstairs I also have cardigans, but then I picked a dress from my uh, wardrobe, from my closet. I think you say it like that. I'm always confused about the words. In Dutch, we say kleding kast, uh, cloth closet. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the literal uh, pronunciation. Um, and there was hanging this cardigan. And I thought, oh yeah, let me wear that one today. So I did. And um, it was my favorite for years. And I uh, immediately immediately felt why. Because I feel very good and nice in, uh, in this cardigan. It's really uh, lovely. And suddenly I realized that I didn't buy anything new this winter. And that's quite special because I'm a woman. So I'm quite sure that most of my viewers are women too. And I'm quite sure there are quite some women recognizing what I want to try, what I want to tell right now. Every season I have certainly once, maybe twice, some, some tries, no tries is not a word. Some three times, sometimes three times that inner sparkle, which is very strong, so strong that ignoring it, it's not an option, it's not possible, that I need something new in my wardrobe right now. And it has nothing to do with what I want to make or what I need, uh, what is, uh, 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 if, if I have, um, uh, if I am missing a certain amount of something, no, it's maybe it's hormonal, I don't know. But it's such a strong feeling. I need something new right now. I need a new dress because I want to feel good in a new dress. I don't know what exactly it is or where it comes from, but I, uh, it is my experience every season. Um, and um, uh, it 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 also doesn't work to tell your to tell yourself, oh, but you don't need it, or you don't actually have the money for it, or maybe you have to wait. No, don't don't try, <laughs> don't try. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, uh, most of the time I followed my heart, and it was okay. It was okay as long as you don't have that every week, but only once in a season. It's okay. Uh, I don't like shopping, uh, and um, also the uh, uh, the brands I would love to have a dress or something from. Uh, are, we don't have a lot of shops in my city where I can buy that. So most of the time I did online shopping, um, and that's that's maybe even more uh, risky <laughs> online shopping because you can sit on your couch and you can order. You don't have to go outside, and it makes it very easy to follow your inner desire. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's nice, but also a bit tricky. Um, but it's okay, it's okay. But I realized wearing this cardigan uh, suddenly that I didn't um, have that experience this winter. Not even one time, not even a, a little bit of it. I didn't have the experience. I, I never had the inner sparkle. I need a new something right now. So I was thinking, did I did I buy anything new? And it is a bit in the beginning of winter. I needed new shoes, so I did buy new shoes. Um, I did buy a new pair of tights. I received a new dress from Simply Grey. The the little bit of chestnut warm orange linen dress um, I received from a lovely uh, shop owner in the Netherlands, little shop around the corner. And what I did buy was two times the fabric for a hinterland dress that I made myself. Um, and I, I couldn't think of anything else. I think that was it. Um, and that made me realize that um, my wardrobe at the moment is quite complete. Uh, it was always quite complete, but it never felt complete. <laughs> but now, for months and months, it felt quite complete. And of course, I really want to make another hinterland dress, but not because I need it, but it's also for the making process. Um, and it, it really makes me feel satisfied. And suddenly I realized that I'm only wearing 
uh, handmade items at the moment. Not my basic, not my tights, not my shirts, um, but my dresses and skirts and, and cardigans and, and sweaters are most of the time handmade. And um, suddenly I realized that I reached the level uh, of a really good sustainable wardrobe. And uh, it was never, that was never the reason why I think it's a good thing. It was never the reason why I um, made this. It, it was about the making, that that, that process uh, I love so much. But it's, it was really fun. And now I'm thinking, I didn't tell in my Dutch episode, but now I'm realizing um, uh, maybe the difference between something handmade and something store-bought can also um, fill your heart more. Something handmade can fill your heart more, so you doesn't need, uh, you don't need um, uh, to buy more and more and more to reach a specific level. Uh, one handmade dress maybe counts for six store-bought dresses. That feeling, it's a bit hard to explain, but <laughs> maybe that was it. So it was very nice and I felt very, very calm and, and complete and it was that was really a nice feeling to be aware of and yeah that I never uh, uh, have the feeling that I don't know what to wear and I still own all my dresses I've had because I don't want to do them away because I still like them and although I don't wear them at the moment I thought um, maybe when that sparkle will come that inner power you need something new I can pick something from uh, what I already own but didn't wear for the last 18 months at least um, yeah but it was really uh, it, g it gave me really a nice feeling and it also affects my knitting uh, process a little bit because I really um, uh, my experience right now with my, with my works and products, I always would describe myself as a product knitter. Um, of course, I love the process, but my main focus was on the product because I want to finish a sweater or a cardigan so I could wear it. But now I have a certain amount of wearable knitted and crocheted items, um, actually more than I need, um, because I also would be very happy if I would wear the same outfit every day. <laughs> um, but the things I'm making right now, I'm not feeling the hurry or the motivation to uh, finish it uh, because I want to wear it. And it, my focus is getting more and more to the process. Of course, I really love working on uh, the, the, the clothes I'm making for myself right now. Um, but it's more a slower process. Um, uh, because, of course, I want to wear them and I will be very happy wearing them, but I don't need them. It's, it's, it's changing. I'm feeling that. And, and I can imagine that I will make different things. Or maybe for my family, I, I, I already did, made a sweater for my girl and a cardigan for my husband. Maybe I will, more, I will knit more for them or for my little niece. I am knitting for her or... I don't know. I, I suddenly thought, okay, maybe this summer I will make more accessories. I am thinking about the blue rabbit for my little niece, but also this cloths. And I want to make a, a, a pillow cover and some hot water bottle covers also are high on my list. So it's an interesting process. And I still want to make the cardigans and the sweaters, but... It's feeling different. So that was nice. That was nice to realize. And especially when summer is coming. In summer, I really, I, I, I did make some, quite some tops last, last summer. So I have enough handmade items to wear. And I will add some to my wardrobe. But um, I actually am very happy in just a linen skirt with a black tank top or a black t-shirt. And, and when it's cold, a legging and a cardigan. And that's all. I don't need more. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I don't think I need more. Maybe I will add, I, I, I will add a hinterland dress or maybe two because I just am enjoying that process so much. And maybe a skirt, but not because I need it more because I want to make it. Um, so that's very interesting. Yeah, I love it. I love the process. Okay, um, then. 
the crochet and knitting work from my youngest girl. Um, maybe uh, if you watch my episodes for quite a long time, maybe you remember me telling that I had a neighbor girl, um, which was uh, uh, the same age as my girls. Um, uh, and she was really crocheting a lot last summer. And I, I was a little bit jealous in the positive way, not in a negative way. Jealous is a bit of a negative uh, word, but I really, I really was so enjoying uh, uh, her pleasure of crocheting and she was making all the things and she was doing it everywhere. And I really thought, oh, I want my girls to do that too. <laughs> and uh, I have three children. They are 14, 17 and 19. The oldest, uh, the oldest, oldest one is a boy and the other two girls. And, um, when they were younger, we did quite some crafting with all three of them and they were enjoying it, but they have other interests now. Um, but I always regret a little bit that I didn't uh, had um, interest in crochet or um, knitting when I was a teenager and in my early 20s. Then it began to came, but I missed so many uh, crafting time. I could have made so many things because I had the time for that. And uh, my mom is always laughing because, see, see, I, I, I... I absolutely didn't want to hear anything about making my own sweater. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> my mother was also not knitting at that time. She was knitting a lot when I was little and also now. But when I was a teenager, she wasn't doing it. It was She was do, uh, doing other things. Um, but my children are surrounded by uh, knitting and crocheting their whole life so and uh um uh, they don't hate it they they love me doing it but they aren't we're not really interested by doing it themselves so when our uh neighbor girl was doing that i um uh, i dropped that every now and then not really subtle i'm not a subtle person <laughs> how much fun it would be how i would love it when they would do something like that and uh my eldest girl, uh, the 17 year old, she, she did start knitting her boyfriend a sweater more than a, a year ago, but her stitch gauge was quite tight and we didn't make a swatch. I didn't tell her to do, uh, so she had to rip out the whole sweater and uh, she did had such a part. And then um, she, she wants to start again, but she's, she's really, really busy. She doesn't have the time for that. So I understand that. But then my youngest girl, she has some more time. And um, last summer, she did start crocheting. She did start crocheting Emmy Gurimis. And, and it was quite fun to see how hard she worked to learn it. And, and also I could recognize myself a little bit in it. She didn't want to... to be teached by me and and it, I also I don't like to be teached by someone I want to explore myself and when I, I really didn't get, don't get something I ask someone and that was exactly her say her way she she searched for videos and tutorials and when she didn't get it she asked me but she tried and tried and she was really I don't know the word in uh, in uh, in English, fanatic, but that's not really what I'm meaning. She she put her teeth in it and she did it. <laughs> so I really love to see that power in that little girl. Um, so she made the amigurimis and uh, uh, she did that all summer. And and she's really a talent because I absolutely uh, can't uh, make amigurimis. I don't like it, and especially the faces. Those little faces are always a mess. I think it's a talent to make a amigurumi with the right faces. But she, she um, does own that talent. So she made all those lovely little plants and um, <laughs> those little peas in a row. So sweet. I don't know if I'm close enough to really uh, show you, but uh, I will insert uh, a little bit of close up later. Or maybe I already did. But um, uh, she um, found some uh, books in the library and later she bought them herself and we were on holiday. These books are from Melissa Bradley and it's called Kawaii Crochet. And um, uh, this one is mainly food, I guess. 
And this one are made mainly plants and some other plant related things. So really fun books. And it was uh, also amazing to see um, how, how easily she could understand the patterns, reading a crochet pattern. She started with video tutorials, but she, um, she quite easily could, uh, could read the pattern. So I was really proud, a proud mother. You can understand that, I think. <laughs> So her uh, room is filled with all those lovely tiny things. And um, yeah, uh, she doesn't do this always, but um, every now and then she picks up her crochet hook and uh, she has her own baskets with her own uh, stash, mainly cotton, and uh, that's really nice. And then, then she had the amazing wish. She asked me, can I knit a sweater too? All I wished for. <laughs> Of course you can. Um, so uh, we use the same pattern um, as my eldest daughter uh, used for her uh, boyfriend sweater. Um, uh, but my uh, uh, she finished the sweater because uh, she had the right stitch gauge. This is the town sweater, a pattern by Ozeda. And uh, it's really an easy peasy sweater, um, a boxy, a dropped shoulder, and it's really a lovely pattern. And uh, uh, we use some yarn from my stash. I um, I don't know the exact yarn anymore, but it was from Wool Addicts. And Wool Addicts is a sub company from Lang Yarns. And uh, I am on the list. I, I receive a blogger box every now and then. Um, and this time I received a blogger box uh, filled with 10, a sweater quantity, I, th I think 10 yarn balls of a specific yarn in a color light gray and I wasn't really sure what to do with it but she loved the color I'm not really a gray person she loved the color so uh, it was uh, nice that without investing a lot of money in good yarn uh, it is a superwash yarn it's a bit pilling I, I don't know if I would buy it yeah I do know I would never buy it at this store um, but it's really nice and soft and it is pilling a bit but that's uh, quite often uh, um, uh, with soft yarns um, but it was really a lovely yarn for her to work with. And uh, I will put on the sweater because I fit in it too. And I can show you how, uh, how it is. And I will tell you more about the construction. One minute, please. Okay, ta-da! Let me stand up. This sweater uh, is a bottom-up sweater. So you cast on uh, quite an amount of stitches. And then um, you knit uh, the ribbing with the same needle size as the stockinette. So the ribbing is quite loose and it's quite a big, uh, um, uh, uh, how do you say, quite a high ribbing. And then you knit in a round for quite some time. So it's, it's very easy to begin. Long rounds, um, uh, knit all the stitches except for the ribbing. So it's a perfect beginner project. And um, then you split for the sleeves and you have to do a little bit here because the neckline is lower at the front and at the back. So that was a little bit, um, uh, she need a little bit of instruction and help, but not much because the pattern is very clear and she has no problems with the English. It was also quite fun, but uh, she, she does speak pretty good English. So that's, uh, that's amazing. I couldn't speak so good English uh, at, at such a level when I was that age, but um, we speak English every now and then for fun, and I'm always surprised by her uh, uh, um, capacity. <laughs> capacity. It sounds a bit weird, but uh, to to uh, speak English fluent. Um, okay, but um, then uh, uh, she picked up stitches for the neck uh, for the. Uh, um, arms for the sleeves for the sleeves and then there are some decre decreases in it and then you also have the big uh, ribbing at the end of the sleeves and she wanted the sleeves really long so you could do this and uh, uh, then picking up the stitches for the neckline i think you did a three needle bind off or maybe a kitchener stitch i think a kitchener stitch yes i remember that i see also learned that and um, uh, she needed some help, help with picking up the stitches for the neckline, for the ribbing. Um, and it's uh, knitted double and folded inside and uh, sewn uh, uh, together inside. And uh, I, I was really so proud. She did such a good job by doing this most of the time on her own. And every now and then I did explain a little or I helped a little bit. But um, she did the most by herself. 
Um, she only doesn't like to wear the sweater. I think the fit is a little bit too narrow. This sweater is meant to be worn with a lot of positive ease and we chose the smallest size and I think, I can't remember, but I think we didn't, um, what I did with her Arctic light sweater, I measured uh, the bust circumference with the uh, one of her favorite store-bought sweaters, so that was perfect, but I think we didn't do it for uh, this one. So it is a little bit more fitted than she likes now, but um, it's 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 looking amazing on her. So uh, I think there will be a moment when she feels comfortable wearing it and maybe her taste will change, so it's okay. Um, but uh, a few months ago when it was finished and I, I did a, I did blocked it for her, I thought, okay, let, let's try it on. Uh, I can fit it in it too. And I was really surprised because I would never think I need such a sweater in my life. But when I put it on, I thought, whoa, this is nice. And this is a, 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 a model, a fit, um, yeah, a design. I, I, love, I love the look of it, but not on me. But when I actually put this sweater on, I thought, I want to hold such a sweater too, especially this neckline. It feels so snuggly and warm and cozy. And my neckline problem is not happening. I always feel a bit, Bleh. maybe it is more, I have it more with round necklines. I don't know, but I really, I really love it. And also uh, for me, it's better that the fit is not way too oversized because I don't love the look. But I really feel nice in it. So I have another blogger box from Lang Yarns with lamb's wool, also 10 balls, a little bit of grey brown. So it is in my uh, um, on my list to make such a sweater. Again, the same size. Um, and I can wear it and my girls can wear it too if they want. Um, so uh, and it's, it will be an easy peasy in between work, a little bit the same as this one. So a straight sweater is so easy to knit. And although I don't really like uh, knitting up, uh, knitting bottom up, um, uh, I have the right measurements right now. So it's also not a problem. So, yeah, I am very proud. And um, it is it is. Um, I regret that she um, is. It is not a hard jumping fit for her because uh, um, I think that tempers her desire to knit another sweater a little bit. Um, uh, but she is very happy with her Ar Arctic light sweater, uh, so maybe that's a little bit of a compensation. And she doesn't feel uh, the need to knit another sweater right now. But I have a little bit hope that she wants to learn uh, knitting socks. Uh, when I was on a knitting event uh, in January, there was some of the ladies, um, her name uh, is Julia and uh, she's called the Dutch Knitter. And uh, uh, she was knitting uh, a little cardigan, which I also made. And she uh, uh, needed just a little bit more yarn, uh, just a little, little, little bit. So she asked, is there anyone um, with something left? And I had something left because I needed that cardigan for my girl too. Uh, but I gave it to her because she wanted to use it for her crochet. So I asked, can I give it to that lady? And she said, oh, that's okay, that's okay. And as a thank you, wasn't needed, but as a, as a thank you, Julia gave a ball of sock yarn in the colors my daughter really likes and um, a DK weight sock yarn. And um, uh, I asked her, do you want to learn to knit socks? And she said, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. But she's wearing the hand knit, knit socks I made for her all the time. And uh, they are getting thin at the heels. And she said once, maybe, maybe I should learn to knit socks myself. And I thought, yay, but also I had to react really calm because that's what you have to do when you are talking with teenagers. Oh, that could be a possibility. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe it will happen. So um, yeah, I would love, uh, I would love it. Uh, I would love it to see teenagers more making their wardrobes by themselves. And I think knitting is perfect, also crochet, but it's perfect to bring with you and um, it would be so lovely to see um, teenage girls, young adults hanging out together, um, chatting, having a drink and knitting. So, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm trying. I, uh, I'm trying to give the good example. <laughs> knitting all the time. Yeah. 
Okay, that was it for today. Um, I think I have a lot of uh, knitting time this week, but I thought that last week too, that was quite um, uh, a misunderstanding, but that doesn't matter. But I hope that I can compensate my crafting time a little bit this week, so I have to share more about my own works in progress next week. Uh, I really uh, have my main focus on my Lauder vest, the test knit I am working on for the Crea Bea, uh, for Rebecca from the Crea Bea. Uh, I am uh, quite close to uh, the point I can join the back and the front and uh, knit in the round. So that's always a nice milestone in your knitting work. And uh, it's hanging uh, at my knitting office and um, it's hard jumping. And also the other works in progress uh, are feeling right. When I uh, spent some hours knitting and crochet yesterday, I was feeling all... The overwhelmed feeling disappeared and I was enjoying them all. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to spend quite some time on uh, on that uh, on those projects coming week. So I hope you have uh, enough crafting time this week, too. Uh, and uh, certainly enough hard jumping moments. If you can't find them, make them um, create them for yourself. Uh, and by yourself and um, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!